Film Autopsy. Oh, oh yeah, we have returned. We are back. That's right. That's right. Kung Fu Santa himself. <laughs> Rick Myers, author, Hall of Famer. That's right. And great ass. Rick Myers is back with this badass, <laughs> Fat Samurai Guy. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Action Film Autopsy. And we have a lot to discuss and talk about today. We're going to have a lot of fun. And a lot of these pro uh, you know, projects Rick has seen, I have missed some of these. So it's going to be great to hear what Rick uh, has to say about these <laughs> about a lot of these films because i'm really curious i'm really curious and then we're gonna talk about the the, the series uh, of moon knight the greatest disney plus marvel show in the history of all the shows yes <laughs> we're gonna get into that first up let's give a little quick shout out really quick go go down the line here mike swift what's going on that's right certified badass channel member what's going on lady danish in the house patrick d the assassin king all right, Michael Gonzalez, Omega on 32. Oh, and the filmmaker himself, director, my buddy Matt Merritt from Keep Forward Productions. Let's start the ruckus. Rick, how have you been, my friend? I've been really good. It's, it's funny, I just realized today, if anybody ha out there has the Reels channel, R-E-E-L-Z, on their network or their television, uh, they have a show that sounds like our show. It's oh, Autopsy colon the last days of. Okay, so when are we suing? Oh, we're not, <laughs> not suing. I'm in just fact, I'm they kidding. Be choosers and in fact, look for an episode about it's called Autopsy colon the last days of. Okay, an episode coming up about the last days of Brandon Lee. Oh, all right, okay, if you watch that show. You might see someone you recognize. Ah, okay. All I can tell you is whoever that might be, he's not a badass. <laughs> all right, all right. After check the show, it out. You might agree with me that he's a great ass. <laughs> a great big ass. Did he have a beard? Oh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Rick, it's great having you back, my friend. friend. And we've been, you and I have been getting ready for the 25th annual San Diego Comic Con Kung Fu Extravaganza. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> and they still haven't given us official approval. Yeah. And my medical team hasn't officially cleared me. Oh, okay. Several of my friends now have our viral friend. Oh. They really? managed to make it for two years. And then this latest, this latest bike got them. Huh. But we'll see. We shall yeah. see. Well, we're All certainly right. it's going to happen one way or the other if they allow it. Okay. We have some exciting, exciting stuff coming up. But we have exciting stuff coming up on this show too. That's right. That's right. You ready to jump right into it? Do, of course. Let's, Let's go, go ahead and do it. First up, now I um, enjoyed the first movie. I um, a lot of people consider the first film uh, the movie that kind of broke. The, the the bad trend of bad video game movies. Of course, that didn't last too long because we're gonna talk about another movie later. <laughs> but um that should be the first two, yeah. Yeah, but Sonic uh the Hedgehog, I thought it was very entertaining, I thought it was fun. I didn't get a chance to see it in the theater. I saw it at home, but I thought it was I thought it was fun. I was curious to see the second one because I am a fan of Knuckles, but I didn't yep. get a chance to see it. So Rick, hmm? how was it? Oh, you haven't seen three. Uh, the the, the Sonic the Hedgehog two. Sonic two. You haven't seen Sonic two. Yes, I haven't seen the second one. All right. Um, so well, Sonic one was, as you said, charming, mm -hmm. and I gave most of the power to the director, uh, who who found. We'll be talking a lot about a four letter word in this episode, and that letter is tone. Mm. O -N -E. Okay. He okay. found the right tone. And the tone was, here we have a hedgehog, a blue hedgehog, who runs really fast, with this wild villain, Eggman, mm -hmm. etc. And he, again, and also we'll be talking a lot about another four-letter word called cast, C-A-S-T. Mm. A, -S -T. a okay. lot of 
filmmakers said, and I bet Matt, Matt would agree with this, if you cast the right person, you're made. If you have a good cast, you're made. Then it's up to you to screw it up. If right, you're right. in there plugging. So the director of Sonic found a unique, a, a great star. And it's not James Madsen. It's this guy. I mean, it's so great to have him back. You see some of his other movies where he's playing a serious actor. And right. He can't do it right. But Jim Carrey is the what Jerry Lewis of our time. <laughs> Most people think of Jerry Lewis now as a jerk. And but I grew up with Jerry Lewis and he was unique. Nobody else performed on screen the way Jerry Lewis does. Yeah, Cinderfella. Jerry, every single line is an education in comedic, that kind of comedic acting. No one else can do it the way Jim does it. And he does it here. I was getting so tired of him in, in, ser in quote, serious movies. Gotcha. In movies where he tried to stretch his character, like right. the cable guy and the majestic. I mean, a lot of these great comedic actors go to do a drama and they overdo the drama. Mm. Now, Jim overdoes his comedy, but does it perfectly. And that's a perfect fit with the rest of this animated movie. Also, another great casting choice. You know who does the voice of Knuckles? <laughs> yeah, Idris Elba, right? He does a great job. <laughs> yes. You right, don't, all right. Play. Is that Idris? He's playing Knuckles. And yeah. it's, like, again, perfect tone. The whole thing is, I mean, it's not realistic. And, of course, from the moment you get into the theater, I didn't expect it to be a reali realistic. But also, I didn't want my suspension of disbelief ruined the way like Mortal Kombat was and the next video game movie we'll be talking was they, they hit it. It's not, is it as good as the first one? It is kind of, oh, okay. But they've opened it up now that they had more money and more freedom and they knew it was not going to fail. They trusted in the director enough that he could bring in his knowledge of the video game and made it, a tr it it's not like, it's not great but it's very entertaining and it moves along. I mean, that's now, all we want. That's all I we watch. Want. When I watch stuff on my screen upstairs, it's like, you know, I get bored for a second. Fast forward, fast forward, fast forward. <laughs> Didn't fast forward this one. No all matter right. how it got, it was on just, it was its own silliness. It wasn't so silly that I went, oh, come on. Right, right, being right. stupid now. Right. Two, three, there's the one thing that I, I thought could have been done better is that Sonic seems to forget his powers at opportune moments. He oh, gets, really? Yeah. He gets into sit. you I think when you see it and you should see it, you'll notice this. He's in a situation where I'm going, run, just run. <laughs> just stand there. Got to go run. fast. Yeah. And he goes, Whoa. And they, he has to figure out how to do whatever he's going to do. And I'm going, why are you trying to figure out, you know what to do? Just <laughs> run. <laughs> Go fast. He's like he's like he's like the Flash. He, he's, right. You know, the Flash can run and, and move around very quick as Sonic can, but there are times when he doesn't do it. So the so the sequence can go on. Gotcha. But gotcha. I forgave him because it okay. was charming and interesting. And I also love um, I also love the voice Ben Schwartz, the voice of Sonic. He also does a terrific job. So now, yeah. How now how was the how was the Tails character? Tails was a little, I mean, again, it's one of it's one of the things I normally wouldn't have forgiven as easily in other movies. Tails just shows up. Okay. And Tails shows up and he starts talking and explaining things. It's all, you know, he's just he's not, I'm saying, why don't you show us this? Why, why are you just telling me this? You know, the old thing in movies, Matt Merritt again could tell you, show, don't tell. Tails just showed up and, and talked. And and again, there was one or two moments in the movies where I'm going, where Tails goes, what am I going to do? And I'm going, fly! Fly, <laughs> man! Don't just, what am I going to do? They got, they, got, they got silly. They didn't quite get stupid. 
Okay. okay. So I'm not, I'm not going to be like annoyed throughout the entire movie with Tails. You shouldn't be. Okay. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> also, I highly recommend that you see Uncharted before you see something. <laughs> All right. Speaking I of Uncharted. I a lot more after yeah. <laughs> Uncharted. <laughs> oh, well, that's good to know that uh, uh, the sequel Sonic 2 Electric Boogaloo uh, definitely delivered and was entertaining. So I'll definitely and go check it out. They also were clearly setting up for the third one, which okay. is another thing, which is another thing which I usually don't like. I want a movie to be a movie. Don't mm. be intro. Because we're going to be talking about that again in this in this episode for several movies. And it was like, I'm like, don't don't make a setup for the next one. Do this movie. Or I this like that. Movie. I like that line of thinking. I like that. Uh before we move on. Uh, the Knuckles versus Sonic fight was it a good showdown? Was it a good confrontation? Again, <laughs> from a from a good ass standpoint, yes. Okay, perhaps, okay. Perhaps not for a badass standpoint. Okay. Again, you'll see. I mean, uh, several of the my favorite movies in in this group of stuff we're talking about, Matt, are great ass movies. In other words, they're about kung fu. They're not martial arts. And so the characters learn and the characters grow. And right. again, quote, Spider-Man, uh, no way home. We're not going to kick some ass. We're going to cure some ass. Right, right, so right. I remember fondly how the conflict between Knuckles and Sonic plays out. And I appreciated that. Okay. All right. Cool. As long as it's entertaining. I'm I sure don't I'll... really remember their actual confrontation. I remember it wasn't insulting, but I don't remember it being exciting. Maybe it was just brief. Maybe because it was brief. It was maybe. brief, and it, but it was it's still, and you know, it's a cartoon. Yeah, yeah. All right, copy that. All right, so thumbs up from Rick uh, for Sonic <laughs> 2. Oh, in the middle. Okay. <laughs> cleaning up. Cleaning up. <laughs> so, so for something you hate, are you going to do this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Thank you, Frank. Shout out to Frank, my buddy. Yeah, Frank Absolutely Dang. Master, the king of the Kung Fu commentary. That's it. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to use that for sure. Yeah. All right. Uh, we're <laughs> going to find out which thumb uh, Rick's going to give Uncharted. So uh, before you get into it, Rick, yeah. me and a, a buddy of mine from Media Glitch, Joe Valley, another filmmaker, another, another great guy, we did a trailer reaction for this, and it was so generic and so underwhelming that i instantly thought oh it must be going straight to netflix that was my reaction and it was oh movie movie theaters oh okay ah, but yeah it wasn't enough to pull me to to go well, you see saw it. how well it did it wasn't enough to pull much of anybody in the, oh it didn't do that well not really i mean it did i i, well, I don't know how much it cost i think they probably right. cost, but we'll check that but okay. you, know, you see, I'm not going to give it a thumbs down or a, or two thumbs down, which I'm tempted to do. Right. I really enjoyed it. Okay. Because it, but not in a good way. <laughs> I enjoyed it in the way I go when I when I see a movie and I can, I I love solving mysteries. That's what the action film autopsy is about. We're opening these movies up and figuring out what killed them. Right. So I love a movie. I mean, where I where I immediately know what killed it. You know, it's like you're Watson and I'm Holmes or I'm Holmes and you're Watson and you go, you know, what, ki what killed him? Good ass, <laughs> what killed him? And my reply is I know exactly what killed him, Watson. And what killed them was I, as you know, and I see it a lot lately, especially in this period of when releasing films in the spring before the summer hits, you can see the attitude of the producers. You can see the attitude of the studio. And when that attitude is, this is good enough for garbage, mm -hmm. when they have no respect for the characters and especially no respect for the fans of the movie they're doing, this movie had an automatic group of fans. They're, you're going you're to put out Uncharted. The Uncharted fans are going to come to it. So it is up to you as a studio and as a filmmaker to respect the source material and respect Preach. the fans of the source material. Preach it. From the very moment this movie started, you could see that they did not. 
This was a deal where a producer got the power. By the way, I can recommend, it's not a great show, but it's a very interesting show because it shows Hollywood the way it usually reacts. They have a thing on Paramount Plus now called The Offer about the making of The Godfather. And you can see oh, I saw how that. Hollywood behaves. Yeah, yeah. The ego games that go on behind the scenes. And also the power games that go on behind the scenes. This one was clearly, as soon as they cast Peter Parker, <laughs> and by the way, they didn't cast Tom Holland. They cast Peter Parker. That was obvious. Yeah. They were saying, all right, we have the Uncharted fans. Are we going to give them somebody they want to see? No, because it's our movie. So we're going to get the Spider-Man fans by casting Peter Parker. Even mm -hmm. though everyone who knows anything about the video game, and that means anyone who went to the opening weekend, the opening night in the, in the first weekend of yeah. the, in the theaters, instantly knew they got it wrong. Instantly knew that Tom Holland was not right for this part. And also instantly knew that the director and or producers instructed him to behave like Peter Parker. Mm, that sucks. You know, you don't, hey, you don't want to disappoint your Spider-Man fans. Man. <laughs> and he, and you know, I understand Tom Holland, who's extremely talented, and I'm greatly looking forward to his, uh, when he plays Fred Astaire in a biopic that's coming Oh, up. really? He's perfect for that. Oh, yeah. Wow. And Long and dance man. I mean, he's yeah, a, yeah. he got awards on Broadway, yeah. but totally wrong. Was directed totally wrong. But he did what so many of my friends who are stuck in this sort of situation, and your friends too, which is, well, oh, the check's good. <laughs> I like the numbers on the check. Not yeah. too happy with the script. And the whole movie is just like, it just stinks of. Now, what's the initials? This T I G. E, F, G. This is good enough for garbage. That's it. That's and, a new meme we're starting here. And moves Hashtag. Along. The other thing that I felt, you know, you could tell the producer was in an insulting mood because the opening sequence is a direct ripoff of the climactic sequence from the James Bond movie, The Living Daylights, which they also may have borrowed for the video game. I'm not sure. Anybody who mm. plays the video game more than I do has to let me know whether they have that sequence of all the um, all the netted boxes coming out of the back of the cargo plane. And you can right. see that. That's yeah, there. there's, some, there's something similar like that in the games. Yeah, okay, there's something similar, but they also borrowed that from The Living Daylights. And the, oh, yeah. yeah. And, the big, and, of course, I'm a huge James Bond fan, and the big difference is that this sequence was just green screen oh. amenia. This thing was so artificial looking. The game is so much better than this. It is, yeah. And the sequence <laughs> in the James Bond film was actual, was real. Yeah. See the weight. You could see the balance. You could see the, the gravity. Yeah. This thing is, so, and you know, as soon as this started, I just, <laughs> I have to get my, I, I've got to find my eye doctor. I went to the eye doctor recently. I'm fine. As a matter of fact, I'm very good. But I, I asked them, could you put in a sound effect? Every time I rolled my eyes, it makes noise, you know, like, like dice rolling or something. You know? Because, man, as soon as this movie started, I went, insult everybody, why don't you? I thought I was watching this year's Oscars again. Let's, let's insult everybody. <laughs> So, so Sonic temporarily broke the streak, the bad video game movie streak, temporarily. Well, the first one did because it yeah. was at least fun. It was fun. It yeah, was in the, right, the right. right attitude for the for the actual subject matter. It didn't insult the subject matter or the fans of the subject matter. Right, right. Uh, well, quick the, right. Car, you notice the producer tried at the beginning of Sonic by making that horrible Sonic that had to be changed before ah. the movie came out. And the director, oh, that's right. And the public, yeah. I think that. It was the same thing I think that the Deadpool guys did when the studio wouldn't let them do Deadpool, and they they oh how did the how did the footage get onto the web? Uh huh. You know, it's yeah, just in yeah. the comic. Oh, how did the footage get onto the web? <laughs> that happened recently. What was the other thing that happened recently with the footage? Oh, the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court. The release of the thing about canceling abortion. That yeah. 
that was obviously somebody in the office is going, oh, no, this has got to go onto the Internet right now. Let's see if we can cancel this. So, yeah, that's that's the new trick. If you want to try to get to the fans directly. Leak it. Around really yeah. bad producers. Right. Oh, how did it get on the Internet? Right, exactly. Real, real quick question. Um, I, I saw some other reviews and comments of Uncharted, and they were like, Generic from beginning to end, yeah. and you know Mark Wahlberg was miscast as Sully. It's just yeah. mess. But they were saying that they, all of them, a lot of them that I saw was they said they enjoyed the p- pirate ship attack action sequence in the air. So I have to ask you since you've seen it. That was, was it- again, I you know, what they were doing there was kind of again, is that from the video game? Did they do a pirate ship on the video game? That I am not sure. Because if they only played the first two, it's a clear again. The producers are going. What else can we knock off? Let's knock off Pirates of the Caribbean. Let's knock off Pirates of the Caribbean because right. Johnny Depp's not going to do another one. Right. So we'll do it instead. And as such, it reminded me of some of my favorite moments from the Pirates of the Caribbean pictures, where they were were sort of recreating Jackie Chan like fun stunting. In an okay, Wu, location. Wu Bear says they did that in Uncharted 4. So okay. they made a copy from the game there. All right. But in terms of the live action movie ver- version of it, was it a was it a good action sequence or was it just generic in the air? In other words, I remember smiling a couple of times, but at the same time I was I was just again the sound effect of my eyes rolling. Uh, <laughs> was, I remember ex- a matter of fact, now I remember. I remember exactly what I thought. I didn't say it aloud, but I thought it. Too little, too late. Ah, uh, ooh, speaking of that, too little, too late. Yeah. We're going to get into that a little bit later with a series we're going to talk about. Uh, <laughs> but, oh, I got a lot to say oh, about it. Oh, that. I can't wait to hear it. Yeah, I can't yeah. wait to hear it, Rick. Perhaps All right. So um, Sonic yeah. 2 was solid. If you see Uncharted on TV, if you get it on streaming or whatever. Watch it for free. Yeah. It's a time, it's a good time waster. It's 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 it's, so, it's it's insulting, but not so insulting that I stopped watching. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> it moves along. It, it's not uncharted, but it moves along. I get, I just I just want to see that quote of yours on the poster advertising the movie. <laughs> it's not insulting, but you know, you can get through yeah. it, you know. <laughs> it's entertaining enough. Yeah. All I, right. I'd give I'm it probably gonna skip it. I'd give it more one of these. Okay. And All I right. give this to the producer. I mean, the producer. <laughs> yeah, I stop fucking around. <laughs> Copy that. All right, so let's keep it rocking and rolling here, having a blast as usual, talking films with my man. Um, so I've already did a whole spoiler review on this I'm and working. completely ranted and of my disappointment and just. You, you couldn't even entertain me on a mindless action movie level. <laughs> Let's get into it, Rick. I can't wait to hear your thoughts on Fistful of Vengeance. Oh, geez. Well, <laughs> um, I, I wish I still, I wish Inside Kung Fu still existed. There's a website, but they, they haven't put up. I wrote a column for them because, you know, for 30 years, I was writing uh, martial arts and movies column for Inside Kung Fu magazine. Yeah. So I did a column and I included Fistful of Vengeance. And I have a term when I'm putting down a certain kind of martial art movie. And this is clearly martial arts. I mean, Tony Jaa is awesome and Iko Uwe is, but they don't do Kung Fu. They do martial arts and they do it extremely well. But whenever a show, a ripoff show, and you also know what I call certain idolizers of Bruce Lee. I call them fan ghouls because mm. they, you know, dance on the grave. They want Bruce to be stuck in ice from 1973 and they never want him to grow. And whenever a producer wants to take advantage of the already existing audience for martial art movies and kung fu films, but they don't want to respect it and they don't want to respect them, they make a certain kind of film that I call Chop Saki Sui. Like mm. Chop Sui, but, you know, derogatory terms from the past are Chop Saki. Right. And derogatory, you know, derogatory terms for Chinese food is Chop Sui. Right. 
So we put them together, chop, sake, suey. Suey. Now that's a, that's a, um, what is it called when, you know, you're uh, um, yellow on the outside and white on the inside? Is there, I know there's a reverse term. Uh, there's, um, yeah, when you have, when you're yellow on the inside and white on the outside, that's a hard boiled egg. But here it's a bunch of white guys, disrespectful white guys, putting together one from column A, one from column B. They go to see all these movies and they take stuff from each of these movies good enough for garbage. They don't try to make it smart. They don't try to make it connected. They'll see Zoo Warriors of the Magic Mountain or they'll see Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon or they'll see any number of these films you can get, you can watch on Amazon Prime and they'll just take bits and pieces of them and mm -hmm. they'll throw them onto the screen and they'll just yeah. go through it. I'll never forget, and please forgive me, Stephen, if I'm talking out of turn. Stephen Fung, who's one of you know was Jackie Chan's uh, protege for a while, he made one of my favorite movies of the of his time, House of Fury. Mm, yeah, he was the choreographer on Into the Badlands. He was okay. the choreographer for that. And when I talked to him about it after seeing the first season of Into the Badlands, I said, "What happened?" And he went. He leaned in and he said, their only instruction was make it look cool. Hmm. Not make it, not make it have, make, not, not let it make sense. Let it, you know, develop the plot. Let it develop the characters. No, no, no. It has to look cool. Hmm. So all these Chop Saki Sui movies are just mixed up martial arts and white guys going, eh, good enough for garbage. You know, people who like these movies, yeah, they're not worth it. You know, we'll just we'll give them what they want, which is chop sake suey. I'll never forget Raymond Chow, the head of Golden Harvest, said, "You know, Americans only only like chop suey." And my reply to him was, "Americans only know chop suey. Mm. Give them yeah. authentic food, they'll Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, right? All right. the good movies." which yeah. then are undercut by more ex studio executives and more producers who want to say, oh, those were the exception. Those are, you can't recreate that. Right. And, and now with China sort of like canceling everything and not letting any American film into the, into the what are you going to do? But yet, um, fist, Fistful of Vengeance with Worthwhile whenever um, our star fought the stuntman. The moment right. He fought a villain, a, a major cat. The, the, the fights went right into the toilet because the villains weren't trained martial artists. I mean, he fights the girl throughout, and the girl is not good martial artist at all. And so whenever you see he's got, I'm sure he's fighting the same stuntman over and over and over again with different masks on. Right, right, those, right, those, right. Those are tolerable martial arts fights. The 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 the, cap, the thing that helped that you know told me what this movie was like in a nutshell in a one second sequence was at the very 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 end of the movie the movie is worth watching for that last sequence watch closely all the characters after having succeeded oh yeah and by the way that that climactic fight in the null and void land that was <laughs> almost as bad as the last fight in Mulan where you know Jet Li is sprung up so so. It's terrible. Uh, yeah. And but, so uh, that has created a meme. Hold hold your thought, Rick. Yeah. That yeah. has created a meme here on the channel. So anytime you hear me say, just <laughs> dangle them. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. We don't know. We don't know. We don't have time. We don't we don't really care about having an awesome climactic fight. Just dangle them. Fuck yeah. it. Yeah. Hashtag circ de fucker fuckery. <laughs> I'm not gonna, yeah, I'm not gonna circ de fuckery. That's right. That should be a t-shirt. <laughs> So, oh yeah, I want a T-shirt of that. By the way, you get me a T-shirt of, of that of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> but um, oh, there it is. Um, go. I won't just fast forward to the end of the um, at the end of the movie. Just watch that last thing. What happens is all the heroes now that everything's fine, they all go running towards <laughs> the surf while they have that. Not a, it's not a crane shot. It's you know the whatever that. Is They're all on the beach, yeah. Yeah. Watch our hero. Watch the hero. 
he's running, 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 and they all have to get to the water. But just when the shot is about to end, he's not far enough into the water to get there. He just dives into the sand. <laughs> the water, he dives into the equivalent of a puddle. You can see him hit the ground. Do wow. they do the shot again? No, they do not do the oh, shot. Oh, I got to go back and, and fast forward to the end now. I, I, I was so checked out, Rick. Yeah. Oh, I don't blame you. I was so, I just, I didn't even notice I, that. I really did. I fast forwarded through that. I would fast forward as soon as they, as soon as I heard the first plot, I just fast forward to the fights, fast forward to the fights, fast yeah. forward to the fights. Yeah. That's another meme you can put up, you know. <laughs> fast forward to the fights. <laughs> I watched all the fights. And at the end, yeah. I wanted to see how it played out. And also, I love him. Right. I didn't love any of the other actors. They were all, you know. Yeah. I know. Against. I know. Man, watching him take take a dive into that, into the sand. <laughs> that That's is hilarious. Again, that sums up the movie right there. Yeah. And I'm sure he looked up with the sand covering him, you know, with his, yeah. his hand in his mouth and goes, we're going to do it again? They're going, nah, we're not doing it again. <laughs> we only have one shot at that. That's it. So that told me all I needed to know about how the filmmakers actually cared about the movie. And they didn't. So I, why do I care? I don't. Like throughout the review, I was I was chatting about it with Kyle Long, and I got more impatient and angry by the end of the review that I actually lowered my score, my intended score for it. I actually lowered it, and it's like, it's like, you know me, Rick. It's I'm I'm very forgiving sometimes, and if it's bad, I like I like the yeah, I like the mindless. It could be mindless. It could be stupid as long as it's entertaining, right? Yeah, and at first I was kind of forgiven, and I was like, "All right, we have some some decent carnage here and there." <laughs> and then when we got, you know, like you said, you were correct about Eco fighting the stuntman early on was good with the butcher knives and axes and stuff. But when we get to the finale, I was completely, I was so stunned. I couldn't believe we had five showdowns in the finale, and every single <laughs> fight was horrible or disappointing i couldn't believe it i couldn't well, believe it i was i couldn't believe it you're you're a noble man you're a good man because just dangle them just dangle them you're, you're willing you're willing to have fun but you're yeah. not willing to be insulted you know i could we could have fun with you but if i start you know having you know making fun of your whatever uh -huh. you're good with that but if i start legitimately insulting you not too, not cool, man. This movie insulted us. Yeah. Worse than that, I I've said this in Hollywood a lot. Hey, you can sit on me, just don't shit on me. Ah. And that's that's where I draw the line. This movie was constantly shitting, and looking at it's going uh, 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 good enough for garbage, right? Uh, uh, uh. You'll swallow anything, won't you? Yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll watch it, but we does we don't have to like it, and we don't have to we don't have to. Um, promote it or yeah or give it a I, I, yeah you know i was upset what they did with uh juju chan's character i was just like oh so they build her up in the second half of the season and they just kill her <laughs> kill her she's dead all right all right move on next <laughs> like what they don't care they didn't care about this and it was good enough for garbage and that's what we got and this fight sequence here uh i couldn't believe it i was absolutely stunned because Eco is the man and his and the stunt team are great. And I couldn't believe the the let's move to the marker, do our moves because we want the cool camera shot zoom in. And you could totally tell they're running in, stopping, doing the movement slowly, and then moving back, moving over. I, I could I was like, what? Hey, but Kyle said it was previs. It looked like a previs. Let's rehearse what we're doing. And, the, and and I I, I was it's so the green great. it's the green hornet syndrome which is they had Bruce Lee they wouldn't let him be Bruce Lee they just wouldn't let him be mm. because you know Hollywood is still in certain places twenty percent of Hollywood filmmakers are geniuses eighty percent are venal backstabbers and the venal backstabbers want to denigrate women want to denigrate denigrate minorities only Marvel is at this point is willing to rise them up. 
But now with the problems Netflix is for had, better or for worse, but yeah, we'll get, <laughs> we'll get to that. Well, yeah, we're going to have to get. I'm I'm always fascinated with with Disney screw ups because I know they have the talent, right? Yeah. Not to screw up. So when they do screw up, again, it's another mystery. Yeah, for yeah. Sure. We, for Sherlock, for Sherlock, Rick. Sherlock Rick. Yeah, yeah. All right. So enough of oh, the. Shit. I'm so sorry, Sherlock Santa. Sherlock, Sherlock Santa. Santa. <laughs> so Enough of the hashtag Cirque de fuckery. We're going to move on now. Oh, we can, you can use it again. <laughs> got some more coming up. That's true. That's true. Uh, the movie I was off and on seeing, and then by the time I wanted to see it, it was out of the theaters. Then it came to Hulu and HBO Max, and I still was like, at some point, I'll get to it. I just wasn't like clamoring to get to it. All right. Rick, the King's Man. What, what do we got going? G positives, negative, negatives. What did you think of The King's Man? I've watched all the Kingsman movies, you know, all the pre mm -hmm. the other movies. This is the prequel, the, the ones that followed. Right. Because um, I love James Bond and it's a knockoff of James Bond. This one has that four letter word problem tone. The Kingsman movies have tone issues in every single one of them. So when I came to this one, I was expecting the same problems and I got it. I got it okay. in more uncertain terms. Okay. The filmmaker um, just, and we'll see more of this coming up too, just seems to want to screw with the audience. This is my, you know, this is different than a producer. This is a director. And we'll also see another project where the actor is the issue. And you can see that hmm. Daniel Craig, James Bond movies. Craig was in power on the set. That's why the movies turned out the way they did. Here, the director writer was power on the set. And that's why it turned out. Because whatever his problems were, however he was raised by his mommy and daddy, this right. is how it's reflecting in the approach to the plot. However, the fights... I mean, it's an upsetting movie. It's an annoying movie. It's a stupid movie. It's an interesting movie. It's all okay. of those things. Nobody ever said this guy wasn't interesting. Right. It's just not my cup of tea. However, what pissed me off in a reverse kind of way from what we'll be talking about soon is okay. the fights were great. Oh, that sucks. The fights were great. The fights were the good. Okay. Were great, but the fights were great. This is truly a fast forward to the fight movie. It's also beautifully made. Right. It's not beautifully written, but it's beautifully made. Great cast. I mean, I'll see Ref Ray Fines in anything. Oh yeah. yeah Again, I wish. I tell you, the sequence. I did one of my ghostwritten books had a large subplot about Rasputin, and so I researched Rasputin a lot. The Rasputin sequence in this movie is excellent. Okay. Except I wish the rest of the movie was as good as that. And the fight. I mean, I've always wanted to see this fight. The fight is choreographed to music. Okay. And it's just beautifully done. Yes, just beautifully done. And I, you know, and I just for the rest of the movie, I'm sitting there going, oh, oh, oh. and he and also he was a great Rasputin. The 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 small clips of Rasputin that I did see, yeah, I was like. You know, me and Lady Fablet, I'm like, we're watching the movie for him. <laughs> we're go like, whenever we get around to watching it, we're going to watch it for that guy. Subject, you know, you know, Rasputin's Game of Death. I mean, just a great, great sequence. And again, look at the beautiful scenery. Look at the beautiful set. Look at the beautiful film making. It's on If only he would take his movies seriously and not use them as a... Uh, in joke, what is it? A practical joke on the audience. He makes his movies like practical jokes. He do finds you, it amusing to do it. Do you still feel the first one's the better, audience. the best of the three? Well, that scene alone. Again, I think that scene's a classic. If I can get that for the Comic Con, I'll, I'll show it. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Uh, I mean, I love that scene, but it makes, and I watch that scene like, and I watch the rest <laughs> of it like, all right, I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna watch it for the fights for sure. And I like I like Gemma. I like Gemma. Watch them run into the surf and watch for the fights. 
Okay. <laughs> Copy that. So overall, it was the tone was off, but it was a solid watch. Is it is it this? Again, it depends. I mean, from a badassery standpoint, yeah, you'll be fine. From a okay. good standpoint, no, it's too it's too annoying to me. So I I just don't understand why a person would insult their audience this way. I have enjoyed every pretty much every I mean, some movies are better than others, but I've enjoyed Matthew Vaughn's movies, pretty much every single one of them, until he broke until he broke his own curse. He always he always said he will never prequel or sequel his work. And I've enjoyed Stardust. I enjoyed X Men First Class. Like I've enjoyed Layer Cake. I've enjoyed every single one of his movies. Kick Ass, the first Kick Ass, and he broke the the he he broke the curse or not the curse whatever he broke the chain when he sequeled kingsman i think i think that was the beginning of the downfall there maybe it's it's self-sabotage because mm. he's mad at himself or so, this yeah well it's both it's always yeah. this right it's always it's, that yeah but it's probably both but as i always i mean since i've worked with so many artists in so many mediums I always have to tell marketers, do not depend on the money because they always say, you know, oh, they'll take it because we're going to give them this much money. I'm saying don't depend on that. Artists are artists. Right. Right. So, but yeah. And uh, a, rest, I, in peace, rest in peace uh, to Brad Allen. Uh, Brad. For sure. Brad, 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 Brad. Brad. I you know. Know. Oh, yes. we have Nina and Lucic here. He's saying hi, Rick and Fat hey, Samurai man. Guy. Just want to say hi. Have fun, guys. I got to go back to bed. It's late. Good to see the magnificent duo back in action. Well, it's good to see you, brother. Get some sleep, and uh, thanks again for uh, uh, creating the artwork for the show. We appreciate thanks that. For sure. Yes, yes. All right, we're moving on. We're rocking and rolling here. Now, I saw the trailer for this. Action-wise, I had my fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. uh, I was hoping that this would be, you know, plot-wise, I, I didn't know. I, I didn't know if I was going to like the story, but action-wise, I was like, okay, please let this be a return to form for Michael Bay, the rock Michael Bay. I want back. Uh, is it, is it 12 hours or 13 hours? Um, 13 hours. Oh yeah. I forgot. It's 13. Yeah. Hours. That I want, I want at least that Michael Bay back Rick. I didn't get a chance to see it. I so did. tell me your thoughts about, uh, ambulance. The ambulance. Well, his name is no longer Bay. Michael Bay. His name oh. is, his name is Michael Baymax. Oh, <laughs> Baymax. As soon as I watched this, I said, Oh, Baymax is back in action. In other words, everything is pushed. Right. I wanted to see the movie this was based on. Oh, okay. I wasn't able to get it in time. It's a I think it's a Danish movie or a Swedish movie or something, but it's a foreign movie. Okay. That this movie is based on. Same plot. But doesn't have Baymax behind the camera or the huge amount of money. And as soon as this one started, I just sort of went, all right, let's see how long I can last. <laughs> okay. Because it is, of course, well done. Okay. But as soon as do we do you have a picture of the uh of the nurse? Do you have a picture of the EMT? Uh no, but I she's yeah, on there, the right hand side here. There she is. Yeah, I mean that's his replacement for the women he who what was the name? I'm, I'm Megan blanking. Fox. Megan Fox. That's his replacement for Megan Fox. That's his replacement for Wonder Woman. <laughs> she's an EMT, and okay. she, she just came right off of a runway show. I mean, the moment she showed up on screen, I just went. <laughs> And, and, you know, and sort of that breaks it for me because usually if there's somebody that – whenever anybody is really incredibly beautiful looking right. in a movie and the other actors don't react to it and they don't – but they have to react to it by just sort of like looking maybe a little bit too long. They can't really say, oh, you're beautiful because that doesn't work in the woke era. Right, but right. Every time she showed up on screen, I went, this has nothing to do with reality. And and Baymax agreed with me. So the whole movie, he took this tight, little, suspense action film, uh -huh. blew it up, literally. 
there are more explosions in this thing. There are so much, there's so much collateral damage. So, I mean, I felt like going, all right, 60 people died in that sequence. 60, I mean, 60 innocent bystanders, if this was the real world. Right, but, right. Well, Rick, it's not the real world. It's a Baymax movie. You knew that when you walked in. So on the basis of that, it's sharply made. It's very sharply made. Okay. He keeps, he keeps the, the thing spinning. He keeps the things moving. But nowadays, I guess it's a subject of the length of my beard and my age. I really want to care about the the, the uh, characters. I want to care about the characters. The guy on the left there is the one we're supposed to care about. But he's in such an unrealistic movie. And, he's, and both of these guys, everybody does the best they can in this world where, again, Baymax, all Baymax did. What was that thing that he did, the Horrible Six or whatever it was called on? Uh, uh, six Underground? Six Underground or Underground Six or whatever. Yeah, yeah, something like that. He's still doing it. He's he's a he's a spoiled kid with a box of toy soldiers and a box of toy cars, and he picks them up and he throws them. He's just throwing them at the screen, and he also has a whole bunch of fireworks, and everything blows up. So, you ever see that SCTV sequence about uh, uh, morning film report or farmers film report where Billy? Uh, Joe Bob and Billy Saul Hurok watch movies and review them, and their reviews are always it blew it up. It blew it up real good. <laughs> that sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah. That's what this was. That's so what it is. If you like, you know, leaving your brain by the door and just having. I think I think you'll be fine with it. It's badass. Okay. There's no okay. question. Badass, and it's well done. Badass, but it is empty. It's empty calories, and I've gotten too old for that. I'm a healthy. Gotcha. Guy. So yeah, all right. Copy that. So I might be okay with it. Oh, look at look who's here. What? Yeah. Jan Lucanus in the house. What's going on, brother? Good to see you, man. Always good to see you, man. And uh, we got Joe Valley from Media Glitch here. Good to see you too, brother. All right. Uh, Jacob says here the overuse of the drone camera angle oh, yeah. shots. That's, Did you enjoy I mean, that? Did that enhance the action? Well, you know, now that we know what it is, I mean, it's the same. They use the drone in the uh, Fistful of Vengeance uh, beach scene. <laughs> now that we know what it is, it's yeah. again no longer exciting because ah. part of the thrill for me, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, because again, I come from another era of film going. The thrill of seeing real cowboys on real horses, real real tanks. You know, James Bond actually doing it at the end of, you know, or the stuntmen actually doing it at the end of Living Daylights is the fact that we know it's real people really doing it. Yeah, real is always better. We it's also always more know exciting. that the film crew had, how did the film crew get this shot? I mean, uh, whenever the, one of those great uh, chase scenes, like in the Seven Ups or Bullet, it's like, how did they get this shot? Yeah. That's dangerous. But now, since we know it's a drone, and we know it's all computer animated. And we'll talk about this when we get to Doctor Strange. Um, a lot of the thing that made a movie emotional to me and involving to me has kind of left. I mean, I, I'm watching everything like an animation now. I watch Sonic. I watch The Bad Guys, the new DreamWorks movie. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like I watch Turning Red, which I quite enjoy. I watched, uh, uh, we don't talk about Bruno again and again mm -hmm. and again. Um, and I, I, so I'm watching all movies like I'm watching animated movies. And in animated movies, I don't, I don't care what happens to the character because I know they're animated. I care about them, but I don't care what happens to them. And in these movies now, it's kind of like, and it's the same thing with the crew. When they use the drone, when they use the computer enhancement, works for Star Wars. Works for the Star Wars uh, Disney Plus shows, that incredible set, which makes it somehow more real to me than less real. But in movies like this one, Ambulance and Fistful, it makes it less real to me. And I care. Fast forward to the fights. Fast forward. Yeah, like, so sci fi and fantasy, it's fine. But when so, you've got a, like a grounded movie, it kind of takes you out of it. An intro, again, we'll get, when we get to Doctor Strange, we will talk okay. about even more depth because i'm fascinated by the effect that movie had on me oh okay yeah. good or bad we'll find out <laughs> oh, 
All right. Oh, let's get this. Oh my goodness, I forgot. I forgot one. Hold on. What? Which one? Do you want me to get my list out? No, no, I got it. I got it. I got it. All right. Let's get into the bad. Oh, Woohoo! The bad. Right, I gotta hear your thoughts on this one, Rick. Well, you know, I enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed it. it too. I enjoyed it as well. The th my issue with it again: the danger of preconceptions. I had been told that this is the movie where they show what a great detective Batman was. He was a terrible detective. <laughs> he was an awful detective. It was fun to watch him try. Yeah. It's, like, it's again, it's like Watson was given the case. You know, like, where's Sherlock? Yeah. Where's Sherlock? Where's Batman? This is this is, you know, Robin dressed up as Batman trying to solve a mystery. He was a total tool throughout yep. the movie. Yeah, he, yeah. I liked it as a companion piece, a bookend to Joker, because okay. it had tone. I like the fact that he was he was a mental cripple. Mm -hmm. That and so I wasn't upset by the fighting because no. he was the quint the quintessential example of a man who is fighting to hurt himself. He's not he he's supposedly trying to hurt others, but he's actually trying to hurt himself. And when he had and I was oh yeah, his Darth Vader sequence. <laughs> when he had the when he had the sequence in the jail with the Riddler, yeah, and he had and they had the filmmakers had the opportunity to correct the mistake they made in the Dark Knight when Batman went batshit on the Joker, not realizing or not acknowledging that that's just what the Joker wanted. Again, you're being a tool, Batman. You're being a fool and a tool, mm -hmm. and I have. You know, I, I think you'll know I wrote for Batman on two different projects in the comics. So I have a huge respect for the character as I see him, which is a great detective and also a very practical fighter because he's trying to accomplish something, not trying to prove how badass he is or trying to hurt himself. I understood that this was year two Batman. He right. was trying to hurt himself. I also understood that he was being taught by a flawed teacher. Alfred was a flawed teacher. Alfred had a lot of guilt on his own and also didn't know how to fight effectively. So it was all punchy, 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 hurt my hands. And it was all going hysterical, letting, you know, letting people take over. But this is another example of something else we'll see in another movie. At the end, he suddenly gets better, which is fine because he's grown by then. He gets right. better, not incredibly better. It's reasonable. Mm -hmm. But my two problems with the movie were credibility. One, the detective aspect. He had to be a tool throughout the entire movie. There wasn't a moment he wasn't a tool. That mm -hmm. the Riddler completely aced him. So when the Riddler got upset in jail, I said, well, all right, now the movie's going away. Because by all rights, the Riddler should be in jail. As soon as Batman left the jail cell, yeah. the Riddler should have stopped getting hysterical and he would have gone, it worked just the way I was. <laughs> what exactly he wanted. Right. That would have been cool to see, yeah. I but was, the I, other I could see that. And I kind of like this, actually. I like the way the director put in little personal jokes. We'll see more of this in Doctor Strange as well. The director put in personal jokes. You know, in jokes. Bay did that too, but by then I was going, you know, you're still a spoiled brat throwing stuff. <laughs> In this movie, the one that I really, I would just, I could not believe this. Yeah, he's a terrible detective, number one. Number two, how come, and I mentioned, this is, the, this is what I wrote about in the 50th anniversary of Detective Comics. How come nobody knows it's Bruce Wayne in a mask? He's all over the, you know, the press. Know, and they had that sequence when Batman comes to the club. Uh, wasn't the 44 club. It was the one, the club above the 44 club or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Batman is the first one who comes to the door and those twin doormen see him. Yeah. And they don't go, Hey, Mr. Wayne, what is it? A uh, costume party? <laughs> don't say that. And then he comes in, the, the movie goes on later in the film, Bruce Wayne comes to the door. Uh huh. 
they open the door, it's the exact same shot. They do it the exact same way. It is so painfully apparent <laughs> that that's Batman without his mask. Uh-huh, uh-huh. That I'm going, this has to be a joke. <laughs> it has to be an he, why shoot it the exact same way with the, if he put in other bodyguards or other, you know, doormen, uh -huh. it would have made sense. At least a little <laughs> sense. Here he's yeah. saying, everybody, every, everybody in, in Gotham City is high. <laughs> it's a terrible perspective, and that's effing Batman, and that's effing Wayne. <laughs> so at that point, I really couldn't the rest of it I enjoyed. I yeah, loved, yeah. I love the two motors. I love the Catwoman Batman relationship. I love uh -huh. the motorcycles in the graveyard, and they take different directions when they leave. That was I, good. Yeah, I enjoyed the movie. Yeah. Just think, if they had fine tuned it, it could have been one of the greatest. But as such, hey, he had a good time. It was very entertaining, very smartly done for the most part. So yeah, it was cool. Um, and also, I'm glad he had his arc, where by the end of the movie, he did learn something by the end of the movie. Not yeah. how to be a good detective, but he did learn how to be a hero rather than a petulant brat. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Very well. What? Progress? What? W what is this? <laughs> I think in movies, when somebody learns something. What is this, Rick? What, what, sh what shenanigans is this? <laughs> learning things yay <laughs> yay all right well i'm glad you enjoyed the film it's good to hear uh but all right let's uh oh god all right <laughs> so let's go ahead oh god I so laugh. I my santa laugh i did my joker laugh <laughs> i like that yeah so And, you know, Rick, pretty much we like, majority of the time we like the same stuff. It's very rare we disagree on some things. But uh, I think one of the things we disagree on is, or did, I don't know if we agreed oh, with no. this, but I, I have, I, I, I pretty much been very vocal on the channel that the Disney Plus shows at this point have given me nothing but blue balls. Every <laughs> single, every single show, WandaVision was fine, but every single show after that, there were moments that were good in every single show. There were moments that I enjoyed, but by the end of it, I was like, eh. oh, you well, know, I, I just... like of those. Loki and Hawkeye, I, I very much enjoyed, especially Hawkeye after Eternals. Hawkeye mm. was such an antidote for me after Eternals. Yeah, you like I think you liked Hawkeye and Loki a lot more than I did. Yes, but I, I was I I'm running out of patience. Here, no, huh? this one, this one definitely. I completely, I, here's the deal. Watson, have you learned enough to understand what, I mean, again, what we discussed about um, uh, the last oh. year, No Time to Die. No oh, okay. Time to Die. Right. That came out that way because of Daniel Craig. Right, right. This show has, I may, I was with, I was about, this is what I was about to say before I saw the last episode. After the first five episodes, I said, if this had been done in half the time with a good editor and not a director, writer, and actor who were conspiring to make it a showcase for the lead, I loved the story up until then. Up until the last episode, I thought the story could have worked if handled smartly and sharply. It's but possible. The last episode hit right and then it was just a big to the audience it was just a big you know we're gonna do what we want to do fuck you yeah there we go <laughs> two two thumbs two thumbs forward <laughs> it was clearly oscar isaac mm -hmm. it's beautifully made i mean and its heart was in the right place but i don't know where its brain was yeah. This thing, I mean, Oscar Isaac created a showcase after, I don't blame him, after Rise of Skywalker, after, uh, what was the, oh yeah, after X-Men Apocalypse, I think. Yeah. I mean, I don't blame him for making something that this is going to be my acting reel for the rest of my career. This is right. what I'm going to show 
to all the producers and casting agents who want to put me. So let's make it all about me, Oscar Isaac and Thesbian. Right. And about, as you well know, as everybody well knows, Moon Knight was a cameo. Right. Moon Knight, it was on the back burner. Yeah. However, yeah. Even so, I was going to say, yeah, you did it half the time. With that plot, it would have been awesome. Then that last episode. And it was like the you know, it was just a gigantic F you. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna get we're gonna let's just go ahead and jump in right here. So you so we're gonna have your experience with it, Rick. And you have to you, everyone watching, you have to understand my mindset before I watch this, okay? I'm again at this point, blue balls every single Disney Marvel show. Now, if you guys enjoy every single Every single Disney Marvel show, if you guys enjoyed it and you thought every single one was the greatest thing in the world, that's great. That's awesome. Good for you. But I have to be honest here on my channel, okay? By the end of, of Hawkeye and all that, I was kind of checking out of Disney Marvel Plus shows. I was you giving me blue balls. You were done. So when I saw Moon Knight was getting, who I think is an awesome comic book character, I, 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 I got excited. I couldn't help myself. Cool. I should have listened I should have listened, but to my smart self, but I, I couldn't help myself. I saw training footage of Oscar Isaacs doing stuff with the stuntman. I was getting excited. Then I saw the trailer and I visually saw what he looked like visually, which they knocked out of the park. He visually looked amazing in the trailer. I was like, oh my God, I, I, I shouldn't be excited for this. I should know better by now. I shouldn't be excited for this. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't help myself because I have been wanting Marvel to have a dark property. You know, I, I want to, it's, 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 it's okay to have variety. You can have your jokes. You can have your Guardians of the Galaxy. You can have your I Am Groots. But we there's, there's dark material and dark characters in Marvel Comics. And I want to see that, you know, come back. And you should have. So, and you right, should. so this was my mentality, okay? And I was like, I brought in Lady Fat Blood because she loves Egypt stuff, you know, Egyptian lore. <laughs> like she loves, like this is this is gonna be great. <sighs> I started like this, Rick. <laughs> I started like this, and by the end of the series, Rick, this was me. Oh man! <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and jump into oh, Moon let me, Knight. Let me, yeah, let me do. I want. I started it like this. And I finished it like, <laughs> can you guess the one moment in the final episode, remember the title of this uh, presentation? Again, what's it called? Action Film Autopsy. Right. The one moment at the end, at the near the very end of that, where they just sort of, where, it, where I sort of went, you just, you just hate us. Just, <laughs> You, Oscar, this is not for the audience. This is for you. Let's, you know, let's actively screw them over. Let's not just make it a, a big show about me, the actor Oscar Isaac. Let's right. screw over the audience. Yeah. The ending sequence, if I had not watched the new rock stars and screen crush on the YouTube channel and to see their dissections of the episodes... I would have had no idea what was the hell was going on. And I know the comic. Right. But can you guess can you guess the moment that did it for me? It's called Action Film Autopsy. The best action scene in the entire show. They don't show. Yes. Yes, and this was this constantly was bothering me. Look, I get it. It's PG-13. I get it. I would prefer Moon Knight to be rated R, but you know how I like my stuff. But I get it. It's PG-13. But I was constantly getting tired of seeing the aftermath of fights. <laughs> I was so getting tired of that. And everyone covered in blood. Yeah. But yet, during the action, yet during every single fight, no blood. Right. No blood. It's, it's so clean. Like, especially when you get to this fight right here. Yeah. Moon Knight is constantly getting stabbed and impaled and stabbing and impaling everybody else. And there's not one drop of blood. But then you'll get after the math fight yeah. scenes where he wakes up and he looks around. There's blood everywhere. This was yeah. annoying me. Yeah. <laughs> I was getting annoyed, but go ahead. It also, what annoyed me was that 
Munaid was a terrible fighter. He was terrible until the last episode. Yes. And that yes. Thank you. They did not set that up at all. Thank. Oh my God, Rick, I love you. They, Thank you so much. They spent almost five hours. This thing was oh. this thing was four hours and fifty minutes long. They could have oh. done so much to set up everything and nailed it. Pay off everything. But instead, they just kept jerking off. The, the yeah. first three episodes could have been done in... The first three episodes were 156 minutes. It could have been done in 60 minutes tops. But yeah. no, at that time, I'm going, why do you keep repeating yourselves? We, yeah, we know that already. We know that already. We yes. know that already. Yes. And they yes. didn't go further. I mean, great actors, beautiful yeah. production mm -hmm. design. The soundtrack's good. Yeah, there's there's positives here. Yeah, but oh. it's again all style, no substance. Until, but even worse than no substance, it's a big it's a big middle finger to the audience. Yeah, we, and we're, 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 we intend not to do it. Right, right. I got a super chat here. Thanks for uh, Bo McCubbins. Thanks again for the super chat. I was excited about She Hulk until I watched Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Loki, Hawkeye, and Mark and Stevens' Wacky Adventure. All right. So he's like me. He's sure. kind of checking out. Mark and Stevens and Jake's Wacky Adventure, who they didn't introduce. Again, that thing I hate so much, where the whole, all four hours and 50 minutes of this was a setup for the sequel. Yeah, exactly. It's like, what the hell, man? Yeah. Yeah, and every I just want to show a, a picture here, guys. I just want to show a picture here, okay? And if it's still here, I mean, I'll be here anymore. Damn it, what happened to it? <laughs> anyway, there was an amazing picture. Yeah, there was an amazing shot in the in the when they had a flashback of when Moon Knight when Mark became Moon Knight for the first time. Yeah, when you guys see this shot, it's one of the most amazing. Marvel jizz shots ever because Moon Knight's fully transformed, Mark is fully transformed, and he's standing there like this. And you see Khonshu leaning over him on the side, looking at him. And this is his wide shot, and it was so amazing. And I'm like, I want to see that show. Can I see that? But no, no, hoping. every episode, Moon Knight was in there for two minutes. Yep, and, and Moon Moon Knight was terrible. He was, he was a, he was, I mean, this is a demigod. This guy's, yeah. you know what he's doing? Just punching, I, punching. Again, fight, demigods fighting by punching each other. Yeah. What the F? <laughs> it's like, I, I was patient. I was trying to be really patient at first, Rick, you know, and we get the first reveal of him in the first episode. And I was like, oh shit. All well, right. Let's see where this goes. Right. I was and hoping then, until the fourth fourth episode did you do you remember that fight oscar isaac had on the rooftop yeah that sucked yeah something was so off about that fight and i was like what happened to all the training like what happened yeah. <laughs> and, it, and it, if they had approached it differently introduced the scarab in the third episode fourth mm, episode, yeah and handled all the fights as a develop i mean the oh, Again, it was like one of those Black Panther situations in terms of the fight scenes for me. Remember my complaints about the Black, Pan Black Panther fight scenes. We have right. an ape versus a panther. They don't act like an ape or a panther. They don't fight like an ape and panther. That is the most natural, easy thing to create involved. In terms of style, yeah. yeah. Here, we have, we have a schizo. And with three personalities. And he could have... You could have choreographed the fight scene and I'm I just get chills thinking about the possibility interesting fight scenes with each of them instead they had two different suits and they right. started doing that yeah reluctantly in the last episode but throughout had he changed personality and changed the way he fought <laughs> during the fights themselves it would have been brilliant but it would have been interesting it's of insulting crap yeah yeah and then we, we, again, he just shows up for like two, three minutes and you're like, oh, there is a, you could tell the special effects guys were into it. Oh, well, yeah. The director, yeah. the producer and the star yeah. were not. Right.
and 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 this is what I came to see, and it was just like two one to two minute cameo, and 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 I was getting impatient to the point where I was kind of checking out, even with the story, you know, oh, yeah. like how cool it would have been to see like a quick flashback of Ethan Hawke's character as Moon Knight, how cool that would have been, you know, but I mean. I, I I I was thinking the opposite, Rick, but I kind of like what you were saying in terms of if done right and done better, everything could have made more sense and been done in terms of storytelling and everything with the with you know with the six episode arc. I was thinking the opposite way. I was kind of like, uh, I agree with your way too, if done right. But I was thinking the opposite way. Whereas if you're gonna do, if you're gonna do this long deep dive. I think there's, isn't there like two episodes where Moon Knight doesn't even show up? Yep. There's dark. like the long, serious, you know, uh, uh, mental issues, deep dive on his past. If you're going to do something like that, where you have a, your protagonist having psychological issues or whatnot, you can't do all of this shit in six episodes, man. You got to at least make it. 13 episodes or more to have balance to where you have you, you you're going to introduce this kind of stuff right but then you have the action sequence you have balance you have balance they had five hours they could have done it but they chose not to and that's another yeah. thing that i noticed about this project i see this a lot again in how hollywood makes stuff there are some movies again with the 80 percent bad producers where they want things to be cool like stephen fung was told they don't want it to be smart. They want it to be cool. Right. And so we have a lot of ideas in this show that yeah. were dropped because all they exist, they simply existed as cool ideas. So right. many sequences were just, I could just see the producer going, let's do this. That would be cool. Right. They never pay it off. They never connect it up. Just, it's just a, an idea lying there going, oh, what are they going to do with that? Oh, I know what they're going to do with that. Nothing. Right. The whole show was like that. You know, f f fuck it. Let's bring in a, a hippo deity. <laughs> Let's bring in a hippo deity. Fuck it. Let's yeah. just do it. We we don't right. have to, we don't have time for this guy. We don't have time for this yeah. guy. No, we 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 got we only got six episodes. Let's just Let's keep rocking on. and rolling. Uh, did you say let's move on? <laughs> All right, one last rant. Okay, please. one last rant. I'll, I'll so, answer emails. <laughs> when before the last episode happened, I turned I turned to my wife and I said, "If this last episode brings me all the action that I wanted, that the style of action that I wanted and craved throughout the entirety of the show, and you just now are going to give me something, because remember you said earlier, Rick, too 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 little, too late." Yep. And I said, I'm going to be pissed off. And what happened? What happened? Even Mr. Knight was like a complete legend, badass. We had this really long, awesome tracking shot where he's fighting all these thugs. Moon Knight's doing all this stuff. He's fighting Stephen, uh, uh, Stephen, Ethan Hawke. We got the, 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 the Egyptian god deities. We got a big giant kaiju fight in the background. All this carnage, all this action. And I was just like, now you're going to give me something cool to look at. So, so giving me something cool to look at and some, and some good fights and stuff at the end actually had the reverse effect on me. And I got pissed off. <laughs> I was like, fuck you. Fuck you, Moon Knight. Get out of here. All these episodes of this shit and this shit. And you're finally going to give me something cool. Right when you end, so Moon Knight can go fuck itself. I think I, I think these six episode Marvel shows need to be a little longer. And I have a feeling, Rick. Yeah, this is just me. Everybody else apparently loves the show. They say it's comic book accurate, and then there's all these Easter eggs. It's great. I feel happy you guys enjoyed it. However, since now this was the final straw for me, I'm probably done. I'm I'm being honest. I'm probably done with Disney Marvel shows. I'm not obviously I'm not gonna watch Ms. Marvel. Uh, but I'm I'm done. I'm done. You know why? Because I feel there will never be nothing as awesome or as good or as compelling as Daredevil season one. I feel like we're never gonna get that good again, Rick. 
I mean, I, you know, I say what I always say when someone says something like that to me, which is good, more for me. Right. You know, I'll watch I know it. you enjoy it. <laughs> I mean, I didn't, in, I enjoyed Daredevil season one, but I didn't enjoy the rest of the Netflix Marvel stuff. I thought that was much worse than what I've been seeing on Disney Plus. Ooh. I, Yikes. I, <laughs> so, you know, again, it's yin and yang, yeah. badass, yeah. badass, whatever. Yeah. Uh, and there's so much great to watch at this point. We don't have to settle for anything we don't want to watch. There's plenty That's true. Of yeah. I'm just being honest. I'm just being honest. That's I'd rather watch, I got more entertainment out of watching Octoman <laughs> than Moon Knight. So there you go. More entertaining. Octoman and Moon Knight can go fuck itself. All right, let's go to Doctor Strange. In the multiverse of madness. I don't know if you saw my review, Rick, but I thought it was very entertaining. I enjoyed it. But you got to remember, I love Sam Raimi's craziness and shenanigans. I like the absurdity of Sam Raimi. So it's not for everyone. Sam Raimi's style is not for everyone. It's it's so. for more people that did Moon Knight then. It's, what happened? It's for more people than enjoyed Moon Knight. <laughs> so yeah, what do you think? It's... I... I am fascinated by Marvel and Kevin Feige and the decision-making process. I admire his willingness to take big swings. Mm -hmm. I admire his support of his filmmakers when he when they're not being fired. You know, because of course Doctor Strange was not supposed to be directed by Sam Raimi. There was another right. on it originally. But once he goes with somebody. He supports them, unlike Kathleen Kennedy over at Star Wars. Although right, now right. Favreau's in charge, Favreau and uh, Filoni are in charge, probably that won't happen as much. Hopefully it won't happen as much. Doctor Strange is one of my favorite characters. I'm wearing my Doctor Strange, my old school Doctor Strange shirt. For Love it. it. Hold on, let, me, let me blow you up. Hold on, let me go. There you go. I have to, you have to go there back. Go. Oh. Yeah, all right. All right. You know, I worked back at Atlas Comics. We worked with Steve Ditko. And I also loved him as a Marvel character because, to my mind, Doctor Strange was the best kung fu character in the Marvel universe because everybody else was doing martial arts. And throughout the original Doctor Strange movie, Doctor Strange kept saying, there's got to be a better way. And at the end, he finds the better way. And what he finds is one of the top laws of elevated, what I call true Kung Fu, which was if someone insists on trying to hurt themselves by trying to hurt you, you'll help. Dormammu, I've come to bargain. Mm -hmm. He said <laughs> that great thing to, you know, Matt Mickelson, you know, I got you what you wanted. You won't like it. Yeah. That's, that's quintessential Kung Fu. Everybody else was doing mystical martial arts. Dr. Strange did so uh, Kung Fu. Yeah. So I went to this one hoping that that, that, that you know, because I saw him in No Way Home and I saw him on other things. And it was kind of like, hmm, it seems that they're making him more of a jokey fraud at this point. But then again, I look back at the original and he always had an, a huge ego problem. And I suddenly went, oh. And as I'm watching it, I'm going, this, he's still a great kung fu guy because i've met many the some of the greatest kung fu teachers i've ever met ran into the same problem that doctor strange ran into in this movie kung fu is so powerful and being sorcerer supreme is so powerful that you kind of lose your mind you lose your way it becomes all about ego it becomes about i'm the best I mean, I'm world champion, you know, Tai Chi expert. And I've seen this happen to teachers. They can't handle it because they have so much power. And it happened to Doc, to Stephen in this movie. And I went, so smart. Yeah, he's still a Kung Fu guy. Let's see how he takes care of this. Yeah. Yeah, the rest... I mean, it's a horror movie. It's a Sam Raimi horror movie. I hope you're happy with the blood content. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I personally, I like Sam Raimi too. 
Uh, oh, okay. Oh, that's cool. Oh, very much. Of course, that energy. I mean, that, that sense of humor, that style. Yeah, of course I do. However, I found the, the, the date that Marvel and Sam Raimi went on for this one. And also, I always thought he should have been. Sam Raimi's history has been as a punching bag for bad studios. You can go back yep. and see how Sam Raimi was treated. Even with you know Spider-Man Three, how he was treated, how they would cut him off the news knees because they knew he would he would cave, he wouldn't fight. But I admired that about him too. He wouldn't fight. He was a kung fu guy. He's not going to fight. He's going to avoid these issues. So I found the relationship between Marvel and Raimi in this very interesting. In that, I I enjoyed. I got a rush from the Marvel fan service in this movie. When oh, the, man. When the Marvel character, when those two Marvel characters showed up, those two, Yeah. can we say their names? Yeah. The, the movie's been out for a while, guys. Spoilers. There'll be some spoiler talk here, but yeah. I, you know, first of all. Everybody knows by now. <laughs> Professor X shows up. And it's the animated X-Men series, Professor yes, X. Yes, yes. That was a thrill. And then not only, not only does Reed Richards show up, but it's a double fan service because it's the head of the Fantastic Four played by the guy everybody wanted to play. The, head of the, <laughs> yeah. the crowd went nuts. And now the rumor is that the reason that John Watts has left the Fantastic, the new Fantastic Four movie is that John Krasinski is taking over as director. Oh, which makes sense considering his, you know, the two Quiet Place movies. Yeah. Uh huh. Great choice as far as I'm concerned. I hope that happens. But I have to admit that when this, the Raimi fan service popped up, kind of take you out, it took you out of the movie. Yeah, a little bit. And I sort of went, awesome, Sam, you deserve it. You deserve the respect. But at the same time, man, I kind of wish you had been strong enough not to go for it. I understand why you did. You deserve it. You're worthy of it. You know, I don't I don't hold it against them. But I don't remember those several moments with fondness, not the way I mean I was legitimately thrilled by the yeah. rest. And I was legitimately thrilled by the end. The fact, you know, again, Sang Chi, they they turn the fist into the open hand. Right. They do that again here too in that America is the one who uses the fist, but she's not using the fist to hurt herself or the Scarlet Witch. She's using the fist to accomplish a mirror shot. Right. Making the character see herself, making, making her realize her mistake. That's, again, classic Kung Fu. I gave you what you, I wish she had said this. I actually wish she had said this. America Chavez would have said, I gave you what you wanted. You won't like it. Right, right, right. right. Same line, because it's absolutely true. They were curing some ass, not kicking. Even Professor X was seeking to cure her, to help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so at that point, so by the end of it, so the first, I also liked the, uh, the end credit uh, scenes, although, you know, again, I would have preferred the Raimi um, fan service to be saved for the the last scene. I would have preferred that Bruce would have turned around at that point, <laughs> not earlier in the film. Right, right, right. But it's, you know, it, it, keeps it, it keeps the movie from being a 10 for me, but it's still in, you know, in the upper nine, you know. A, right. An A plus, it's an A, though. Yeah. It's That's still great. It's still <laughs> and it's smart and it's inventive and it's exciting and it's everything Moon Knight should have been. Yes. Preach it. So again, it's an antidote. Marvel does a yin yang. We have the, the bad yang of Moon Knight. <laughs> uh, yin yang of Marvel. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Well, I'm glad to, I'm glad to hear you still like the movie. So that's good. Oh, I, I really, I, you know, I, it's funny, Mike Gold, who's, you know, an editor at DC Comics and many other places, he had a discussion with me on my Facebook review of it. He's saying, well, I loved it. And I said, I don't know if I love it yet because it hasn't sunk in yet. 
Well, it's sunk in. I love it. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So. Uh, now all we need is Sam Raimi to direct a Ghost Rider movie. <laughs> if that ever happens. <laughs> well, just Sam Raimi to keep work. Hopefully Marvel will keep working with him because Marvel will not disrespect him, will not set him up the way right. the videos he's worked with have set him up in the past. And as he said in, in the press, you know, he's ready for anything. Anything they want to, he can help with, he'll be happy to help. And he's and I'm it's 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 very it's very thrilling to see a filmmaker of his quality and honesty get to have his uh, third act. Yeah. Not to be cheated the way he's been cheated in the past. You know what I would love for him to do as long as as long as Feige does the um, negotiating at Fox, let him do Spider-Man three. That would be crazy. Let him follow up with the other Spider-Man. Let him go yeah. back to the series and let him do it the way he wants to do it and not screw him over the way they had in the past. Yeah. You think if he did a, Sp a Spider-Man 4 with Tobey Maguire, you think Tobey would want to do it? Who knows? Um, yeah. I mean, my gosh, they're just being showered with love everywhere they go now because <laughs> there's no way home. Yeah, yeah. Garfield, I mean, both, I think one more movie for both of them to make up for their la each of their last movies, or in, yeah. in the case, all of his Spider-Man movies were terrible, but he was always great. So right. give him one that's good and let uh, Toby finish up with a great one. That would be awesome. And have that the one out of his ass. I know. <laughs> oh man! And uh, this was a great talking to you again, Rick. Having you here. Was there anything else before we end it? Uh, I'm looking forward to the next one. I mean, we'll we'll keep in touch. It's great to have you back in action too, my friend. It's such oh, a oh yeah. You, uh, Scarlet Witch versus the Illuminati, one of the greatest movie sequences in Marvel history. <laughs> well, at least for me, and I they loved it. Killed. They not only did they fight in character, they died in character. There you go. There you go. There you go. Death was fantastic. <laughs> yes, yes, it was. All right, thank you everyone for watching right now. We have and, uh, hanging any, out with us. Any questions? You can email them to us. Right there's an email for this, isn't there, buddy? Uh, just put in the comments. Put in the yeah, comments, not not in the chat, but in the comments of the video. Uh, if you guys had any questions, and we'll we'll get to you on the next one. All right. But thanks again for hanging out with us. We love talking movies and hanging out with you guys, ranting and praising uh, pro pro projects. It's always fun. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. And don't forget, guys, verses will return. That's right. That's right. So be ready. Get ready. That's right. We're getting the band back together. <laughs> All right, guys. Take care. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next one.